So if you're not aware, Donald Trump's been banned off of every platform he has, including his biggest one, Twitter. This was in response to the terrorist attack by right-wingers, Proud Boys, the KKK, and the 1776 Patriots on the Capitol. Not Antifa. Considering most of Antifa soldiers look like this, they would be slaughtered in a second if it was. <laughs> Unlike what you might believe, this attack on the Capitol was not just random. This was coordinated specifically by Trump himself, encouraged by his son. Kimberly. Have the courage to do the right thing. Fight. Thank you guys. Just really appreciate all the love and support. It's pretty amazing. And instigated by Rudy Giuliani. Let's have trial by combat best known for his role in Borat 2. Trump tweeted out incessantly on his platform, March on Capitol, January 6th. The Proud Boys made merchandise promoting the date, and the 76ers made infographics calling it for being the time for good people to do bad things. This has been a long time coming, ever since Biden got elected. Do you guys remember back in November when people were talking about extremists wanting to commit mass shootings intending to target anyone that appeared to be on the left and everyone was just like, oh, oh, they won't do anything about it. It's obviously not real. <sighs> and while that isn't exactly what happened at the Capitol, five people are still dead, which declares this as a massacre. And these posts by Trump, Rudy Giuliani, etc., completely proves that this was coordinated by them. And I don't want to hear any excuses of being like, well, if people feel like they're not being heard. In June of 2020, Black Lives Matter protests were happening, and a lot of riots were going on alongside them. And I'm not gonna... And I'm not gonna pretend that, like, every single riot that was committed was all just, like, uh, you know, right-wingers trying to take advantage of the situation. I'm sure a handful were, but... You are deluding yourself if you're saying that there was no Black Lives Matter riots. I do wholly agree with Black Lives Matter. I agree with peaceful protests. And I do slightly understand the spike in, like, police response to it. But the 14,000 arrests resulted of it, completely inexcusable. A single person being dead is completely inexcusable. And it's way past just a single person. But people were taking these, like, you know, three or four total riots as, like... <sighs> A complete overarching example of Black Lives Matter. I say people when I mean conservatives and Republicans. They were trying to paint the entire Black Lives Matter protest movement as uh, three or four different violent riots. But to prove this was a long time coming, on November 1st, a group of 1776 patriots crowded, intimidated, and maced someone with bear mace for bearing a Black Lives Matter flag in their car. Something that she's constitutionally entitled to, by the way, but you'll notice Republicans only like the Constitution when it benefits them. I must warn you, the, the following clip might be potentially triggering to some people, but I think it's important to understand the reality of this hive mind. What? Give me that shit. Yeah. This is a fool, you dumb motherfucker! In the, room, in the back, they're blocking me in. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Report. That's fine. They're blocking me in. The Patriots oh, followed me. This is their true colors. I want everyone to know they came. This is a hate crime. They're coming up to my car right now. Get out the car! Get out the car! Get out the car! Get out the car! I'm not scared. If I was scared, I would have left. I need everyone to see this. That's why I'm chilling right here. For what? You call me what? I got you. Queen herself. Oh my god, what the hell? Ew. You came strapped up like that for a 20 year old female? Oh, you a big man. For a female, bro. For a female. He walked up to us. Come get it. Are you saying come get it from a uh, for a female? Hey. What? She's a female. Right here. No. So you guys can jump me. So you can jump me. 
Put your phone down, baby girl. It's a toast for me. <laughs> hey, it's your fucking face for me, bitch. Do something. Fuck that bitch up. Do something. Fuck fucker. Fuck my phone. Do something. Fuck that Fucker, your fucking phone right out of your fucking hand, bitch. Back up. Hey, Biden 2020. <laughs> I want to just take a break here and say that because I'm criticizing Republicans, I'm not saying that this is all Republicans and conservatives. I believe after this Capitol raid, there is going to be a split in the party between Republicans and Trump Republicans because a lot of conservatives did go out and condemn the violence that went down on January 6th. I mean, I, I still fucking hate conservative politics, but like, uh, you know, good on you for being human beings. But one conservative that did not denounce the violence was Donald Trump, the president of the United States. Or he might be, I don't know. Going back to that clip real quick, no arrests were made, by the way. Those guys completely got off scot-free. The police did not take any action at all, as you can see in the final moments of that clip. Gee, I wonder why leftists hate the police. People were talking about the girl should have been carrying a blade or a gun to defend herself, and I fully support her right to do so. But unfortunately for black people, legally owning a gun or a weapon is punishable by death. If you are even rumored to own a gun or a blade or any sort of weapon, there is a very high likelihood of death for black people. A lot of them are not going to be carrying guns to defend themselves themselves. The Black Panthers in the 1960s, they were toting about their neighborhood completely lawfully bearing their guns because they have the right to do so, and they were just killed. I'd like to say that things have changed in the last 60 years, but every single day there's clips being uploaded to Twitter of people being arrested or assaulted, or in the very worst of cases, murdered for carrying guns by police. Anyways, let's fast forward back to January 6th when these pigs decided to raid the Capitol. They chose this specific date because that's when Congress was counting the electoral votes to certify Biden's victory. Trump was begged to denounce this white supremacy on all his public platforms, but because white supremacists are a decent portion of Trump followers, he uh, didn't really do a good job of that, using indecisive doublespeak to make sure he didn't lose those supporters, calling them great patriots and that he loves them. We had an election that was stolen from us, but you have to go home now. This was a fraudulent election. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Fraudulent election. Which, ironically, helped him lose supporters. Trump dragged his feet in reacting, like resisting to send out the National Guard, potentially putting everybody at the Capitol in jeopardy. And after this was settled, in an unprecedented move from Twitter, three of Trump's tweets were deleted and he was banned from tweeting for 12 hours and for posting on Facebook for 24. After the time elapsed, he posted another clip flatly saying he'll facilitate the transition of power and make sure it goes smoothly. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard. Well, actually, you had nothing to do with that decision at all. Here's what happened in reality land. At 12.40 p.m. is when the rioters began showing up to the Capitol. And at 1 p.m., Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund saw that something was up and wanted to deploy some extra cops, about a hundred of them. And then nine minutes later, he tells House Sergeant at Arms Paul Irving that we need the National Guard down here. Come on, call them down. And Irving's like, all right, I'll run it up the chain. Then a long, long series of delays from the Capitol Police. But let, make no mistake, Trump had nothing to do with this at all. Unless if you want to count him never contacting the National Guard at all, which I would. But uh, he doesn't actually mention Biden's name. He just says, uh, whoever, whoever it is, I'll facilitate the transition. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed 
But I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only, only just, just beginning. beginning. People were feeling the video was very similitudinous, but I sincerely hope that wasn't a fluke and he isn't considering planning another attack on our democracy. But thankfully, since his accounts were swiftly banned after that, I think it's safe to say this is where the Trump saga peaked. Hopefully. I would also like to officially declare that banning Trump's Twitter account and his Facebook account and all of his other social media accounts is not censorship. Murder and treason are not protected by the First Amendment. Anybody who claims that Trump's Twitter account falls under the First Amendment and is free speech clearly has not read the First Amendment. And much like how everybody is claiming this is just like 1984, they didn't read that either. This isn't a joke. I sincerely implore you all to keep an eye on this and for everybody at the Capitol to keep an eye on these dates and be ready to respond. While we're on the subject, I want to talk about something that's being discussed a lot lately, and that is Section 230, a piece of legislation that very swiftly says, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. That law is the only way the internet could have possibly flourished outside of being just a plaything for nerds. I absolutely do not believe you should be able to sue Twitter for what some idiot online says, even if it costs the lives of five people. And I'm sure Twitter can afford to get sued. I 100% am sure of that, but rich people don't exactly have the mindset of like, uh, uh, I can afford to spend that money. They want to hoard as much money as they can. And how Twitter and all the other websites are going to respond to this is not by just letting themselves be sued. They are just going to continue to rampantly delete any Twitter account that might put them at risk. Again, not to say Trump's ban was unjustified. I am in full support of Trump's ban. He spreads lies about election fraud and just spews garbage like how the vice president can overturn the election which ended up putting his life in danger, by the way. But that doesn't mean I think Twitter should be sued for what's said on their platform. Right now, the government's mostly democratically run, and Twitter is mostly a left-leaning website. So I'm pretty safe from being banned randomly, but let's imagine that Biden, the House, and the Senate all just eat shit during their terms. And by 2026, we have an entirely Republican government. Well, who do you think's getting censored now, guys? Again, I don't think Trump's ban was censorship. It led to the deaths of four people and one police officer. But that doesn't mean I think Twitter should be held responsible. Yes. Twitter failed to act in banning him and could have stopped this while he was coordinating the attack. But let's be totally honest. Did you see the raid coming? Did anybody think that something of this colossal magnitude could have happened? Do you think the terrorists would have got past the blockade? I would have never in a million years imagined a confederate flag bearing redneck could just waltz into the u.s capitol completely unharmed the police are such lovelies this situation is beyond what anybody including twitter could have imagined we are told that the u.s capitol is one of the most secure buildings in the entire world and that nothing like this could have ever been coordinated and could have happened. But that's just the time that we live in right now. You can support Trump's ban and support Section 230 and wish to stop it from being repealed. Those two ideas aren't inherently antithetical to one another. We can have a middle ground here. Copyrighted material, even if it's fair use, <clears throat> Gone. I can't risk Viacom or WMG suing me. Imagine if some 200 follower, no content, poverty-stricken moonshiner says on Twitter that they're going to attack a building, and that building just so happened to contain your partner, and they end up murdered. Who do you think you're going to sue? Twitter, who had nothing to do with it since encouraging violence is already against their toss, but has billions of dollars, or that loser? I think I'd go for Jack Moneybags throughout any day of the week. 
And I get what you might be thinking, that you want to stop real-world violence from happening at any cost, but repealing Section 230 is a terrible, knee-jerk reaction to this. First of all, we already have real-world laws that make threatening murder and committing murder, the latter of which usually including life in prison or perhaps even capital punishment. We have real-world laws against this, and they can be used against the people that commit the acts directly. I have my own opinions on capital punishment that aren't appropriate for this video, but we don't need extra laws that will result in Twitter blindly taking down anything that they could be sued for. Being honest, if you have enough money, you can sue pretty much anyone for expressing a negative opinion on you. If you just weave your words the correct way, dive in the petty technicals, and with the right lawyer and the right defendant, then you're fucking laughing. You can already sue people for the actions they committed and the things they've said. Having the ability to sue Twitter is going to result in more knee-jerk reactions like threatening to remove Section 230. And I'm sure Twitter has their incredible lawyer team that will beat 90% of the cases thrown at them and they can afford to settle for the other 10%. But they would need to dedicate way more of their time and do the most painful thing that a corporation can do. Spend money. Just to wrap this up, I just want to reiterate, you can support Donald Trump being banned from Twitter, and you can support not removing Section 230. Those are both ideas that can exist. The world is not that black and white. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for, uh, you know... I don't know, probably bad mic quality, I don't know. I keep saying sorry at the end of, like, every video. You know, you don't know what? Fuck you if you have any issues with it. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself.